Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome back. So, if it sounds like there's a slight uh, bit of weariness in my voice, it's because this will be literally the seventh time I've tried to record this video. And a couple of things have occurred to me over the last little bit. I don't understand scope that well, at least not well enough to make a coherent video like this uh, ad-libbing. So hopefully this eighth time will be the charm, but you also want to keep in mind that what we're about to do is an introduction. I'm going to highlight that. And the idea there is that this is not the end-all be-all. Scope becomes much more complicated as you go, and it is something that you're going to constantly be learning about, at least for a little while. The global example, like the way to literally picture how scope might work, would be picture languages and then picture like the globe. So you figure that there are local languages where when you say an utterance, it means something, but perhaps outside of that country, it doesn't mean anything. Now there are some things that might be global language identifiers, maybe like a smiley face. You could picture that that's globally applicable. The problem would become if somebody in a certain country decided that a smiley face meant frowning. It meant the opposite of being happy. Uh, you'd run into a problem because globally a smiley face is defined as being a happy symbol, but some local situation has it defined in the opposite fashion. Now, that's about as good of an example as I can come up with, but here's, here's the sort of like the map that I created for the way you want to think about scope for now. So we have code that is inside of a function, and we don't need any output at the moment. So here is our function. Function goes from here to here. So this is the name of the function we asked you to write, and in general, your best bet is going to be, other than test cases, for the definition of the function, write everything inside of your function either interact with the parameters or the input of some kind, or create a local variable. Variables created outside of the scope of a function, which is to say outside of inside of the function, are considered global, at least global for the context that we're in, which again is this index.js file. You consider that all of this is essentially its own function when it gets run, and it's not, but it kind of is, so we'll consider it like that. We also have things that are created inside of a variable, or inside of a function. So, Input of the function that we asked you to re retie. Well, this is spelled incorrectly, but that's okay. Um, you want to consider that you could create variables inside of your function that are defined for the scope of that function, but aren't able to be accessed outside of that function. We can reach out, meaning that inside of here we could refer to the global variable, but we can't refer outside of this function to variables created inside of it. We also really want to avoid doing the same thing with parameters. Parameters are usually local to the variable that they're, uh, uh, you know, in. And so you don't want to do something like try to reference the parameter of a function outside of that function. The last thing that you would want to keep in mind is that if you create a variable inside of a for loop, it's going to create it newly each time the function iterates. Another thing to mention would be a return statement stops a function. We actually referred to this in a previous video. But if I wrote code down here, the code won't run. And the reason is, is that once a function gets to a return statement, it stops. And to be honest, that's pretty much as much as we need to worry about scope right now. Write your function, write your code inside of your functions. Try to make sure that you define things above where you need them. Uh, functions don't really work that way when we declare them like this. Like I can use this function basically anywhere inside of this scope. But let's just not worry about that because the more complicated you make it now, the more difficult it will be to learn the basics, which is what we're up to right now, and then leave it to later to figure out things more complicated with regard to scope. Uh, okay, good. That's as, that's as short as it's been able to be made. Um, what we're going to do is make reference to this as we go through some functions uh, that are already completed, but we're going to debug them. So that's what we're up to. That was our very, very brief introduction to scope. Uh, more on that will come, but thank you for bearing with us for this portion and looking forward to getting into some debugging. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.